Hello everybody, this is Daryl McHale Brooks. I'd like to thank you all for watching. Uh, yes, this is the On Fire Show, and I have a great guest that comes on. His name is Murray. He's a professor, PhD. Uh, we're going to be talking about World War III, the possibilities, America, Ukraine, Russia, China. Uh, we're going to talk about the rage against the uh, machine, uh, the war, and that happened, uh, the rage against the machine rally that took place in D.C., Oh, I'm bringing him on. All right. Send an invite. Hi, right, Professor Saberin. Hi, Daryl. Hi, hi. Welcome to the On Fire Show again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's great I, to be with you. I, I um, you know, I read your article, your piece you wrote, uh, and it was very interesting. And it talked about the rally in D.C. with Tulsa Gabbard and Ron. Pa uh, Ron Paul, um, about the possibility of are we at World War III now? Is this a proxy war, uh, or is this uh, you know it's it's or a direct war? That's what people are saying. Uh, they are nervous. They don't know what's happening. Um, you're sure, you have Americans I've talked to over the phone today. You know they're they're not really ready to send their children off to fight in a war, especially with Ukraine, and um, so. First of all, tell us, I just want to thank you for writing the article, um, but also uh, thank you for being a, a great patriot uh, when it comes to these controversial issues. And thank you for coming on. Well, thanks. thanks. It's always great to be with you, Daryl. Uh, mm -hmm. We have enough time to discuss these issues rather than doing sound bites on uh, <laughs> mainstream media. So that's the beauty of the internet and Facebook and all the other, these other platforms is that we can have an honest discussion about mm -hmm. uh, these critical issues. And I can tell you, Daryl, from having uh, lived through the Vietnam War as a college student and uh, as a young uh, teacher in the, in the early 1970s, uh, this is worse. Uh, again, having lived through the Cuban Missile Crisis 60 years ago, October 1962, when the United States and the Soviet Union nearly came to a nuclear exchange because of the missiles in Cuba, I know how dangerous it is to, uh, to saber rattle in, in the nuclear age, especially when the United States and Russia think, uh, well, the United States thinks that uh, it has to rule the world. And that's the issue that the American people need to come to grips with, is that America, since the end of World War II, thinks it's, it's destiny to rule the world and that if any country steps out of line, uh, we know what happened in Iran in 1953 when they had a democratic election. The CIA went in there with the uh, UK Secret Service Mm -hmm. uh, intelligence services, and they overthrew a democratically elected governor, Darrell. So when the United States say says that uh, we're in favor of democracy, only uh, except overseas, mm -hmm. and uh, we overthrew Ch uh, Allende in Chile. I mean, it, clearly he was a socialist, but the people chose him. So if you have an honest election and uh, a socialist is chosen. That's what the people choose. And if you have a dishonest election, that's not our problem, Daryl. It's the people in that country that mm -hmm. should rise up and say, we don't accept the results of this election, and they take to the streets. And that's how uh, governments change overseas peacefully, or in some cases, uh, violently, because mm -hmm. uh, uh, we know uh, uh, people have left, uh, people have, uh, have uh, who've been in control of, of uh, dictatorships have uh, the Shah of Iran, good example, 1979, uh, the Shah was overthrown uh, w without uh, a shot being fired by the United States because uh, the people said enough is enough of this brutal totalitarian authoritarian regime that we supported wholeheartedly since the uh, early 1950s. So in my lifetime, Daryl, the, the, the process just keeps on going over and over again. Over and over again, yeah. So um, let's talk about the rally first that happened in D.C., Tulsi Gabbard, Ron Paul, and some others, uh, anti-war rally. Tell us about that. Well, uh, it's, uh, it's posted on LouRockwell.com's blog. Uh, I, I started viewing it, but it's th almost three and a half hours in length. Mm -hmm. So I was, I was listening to some of the snippets from the speakers, and the speakers were on for about 10, 15 minutes each, so they can get in as many speakers as possible. And the beauty of this rally, Daryl, mm -hmm. is that people from across the political spectrum, left and right and center and every, everyone in between, who, who realize that we are on the brink of a nuclear war, 
they're saying we cannot have a, a nuclear war because it would mean the end of civilization. Mm -hmm. And if people are worried about uh, damaging the climate and damaging the environment, what could be more damaging the environment than having hundreds, if not thousands of nuclear uh, we uh, weapons going off around the world? So um, uh, the rally was organized uh, by the Libertarian Party and I think the uh, Green Party, and they put together this magnificent coalition of people and these are, this is the single issue. Now, obviously on other issues, there, there are differences, but on this single issue, which Daryl is the most important issue we're facing as a nation, okay. because if you don't have peace, what difference does it matter if you can go to Walmart or Home Depot or shop on Amazon if civilization is crumbled before our eyes? So peace is the foundation of civilization. Peace is the foundation of prosperity. And I don't know what the thinking is in Washington, except that these people are insane. That's mm -hmm. the only conclusion I can reach, because who in their right mind would want to have a, a nuclear exchange? I mean, who in their right mind would, thinks that a nuclear war is winnable? Who in the Congress is, is supporting this? And it seems that the vast majority of Democrats, I think all the Democrats are supporting this, yeah. and a substantial number of Republicans are supporting it. And so this is what's troubling that we really don't have a dialogue and a discussion about our foreign policy. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to know, where are the adults in the room? Where are the people who are going to stand up for the Constitution and, and stand up for liberty? Because that's what it comes down to, is that if we have a society where the president can unilaterally go to war, if mm -hmm. the Congress just basically is a rubber stamp, then we no longer have a limited government republic. We haven't had one for a long time, but this is even making it worse in an age of uh, nuclear weapons. So, you know, first of all, I want to discuss with you in the 90s, uh, America and NATO uh, promised Gorbachev uh, to not have, uh, you know, NATO and, and, and NATO against their right. border. Right. And, and is this where everything started out, especially with Putin? felt like it was a threat, NATO was a threat to the country? No, no question about it. I mean, the United States government, uh, Secretary of State James Baker, mm -hmm. under, I think, uh, Reagan, and then, uh, actually, it was uh, Bush 1. Bush uh, 1, yeah. It said that uh, NATO was not going to expand eastward. Mm -hmm. And that was the promise made. And when you make a promise, Daryl, in, in, in diplomacy, in, in, in Bro, geopolitics... We know, about, we know about America's promises. <laughs> well, they're not worth the paper they're printed on and um, or, or the words that, that come out of people's mouths. And so mm -hmm. people around the world know that the United States has been a terrible, terrible uh, uh, global partner. But so, so, so we have to really hunker down and uh, stand up uh, uh, four square for the, the principles of peace. I mean, th these principles have been around since the beginning of the Republic. George Washington in his farewell address uh, in, in uh, 1796 said that we should not have entangling alliances, that we should have commerce with all, and that would create a peaceful world. Because uh, in America in the 1790s, they saw the wars constantly happening in Europe, the 30 years war, the 100 years war. And they said, we don't want to get involved in European wars. And uh, unfortunately, we got involved in, in two of them, uh, World War I and World War II. And uh, we didn't get any benefits out of that, to say the least. I mean, uh, what did America get except a huge debt load after World War One and after World War Two? Well, and, we got through all the military we uh, war machine. Well, that's you know they, 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 I mean, they made money, yeah. And and it seems like the the war machine in America, the one that Eisenhower talked about, is is really uh, it's a tie up in ranking when it comes to especially this war. And yeah, it's 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 terrible. I mean. We've already gave, gave Zelensky a hundred billion dollars, mm -hmm. and nobody from the administration is going to Ohio to see the damage that's caused by the train wreck. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I, I think th th this is so callous, this is so anti humanitarian that we're treating our own people like peasants, like serfs, mm -hmm. and that we're treating Zelensky as the coming of, uh, of uh, I don't know what. Uh, 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 a religious figure that people are bowing down to him. Uh, he came to Congress and everyone was waving the Ukrainian flag. Yeah, and and yeah. this guy's a thug. 
He's closed mm -hmm. down uh, churches and, and uh, he's yeah. closed down the opposition. He's closed down uh, some newspapers. So this guy is a thug. And to say that he's Democrat, he's a great uh, uh, proponent of democracy in uh, Eastern mm -hmm. Europe is, is absurd. And, I call him a thug and a fascist. He's definitely a fascist. Well, we, yeah. we, we know that there are a lot of neo-Nazis yes. in the Ukraine. And so yes. uh, the, the mainstream media, I'm not pointing this I'm out. Not talking it, about it. I, 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 and this is why, having observed, watched the nightly news, Daryl, since the 1950s, when I was a little kid in elementary school, to find mm -hmm. out what was going on in, cur in current events. And because uh, I, 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 social studies was one of my favorite subjects, we no longer have an objective, honest, press in this country. No Walter uh, Conkright, that's the way it is. <laughs> and uh, Huntley and Brinkley on uh, yeah. NBC and um, Howard K. Smith on, um, on uh, ABC. These were, these were solid journalists who gave you the facts. They didn't editorialize. They didn't mm. give you opinion. They didn't uh, uh, give you uh, other things except the facts of what was going on, whether it was in Vietnam or other parts of the world and uh it was it was important for the american people to find out what the truth was about the um, foreign policy and domestic policy and when you have a compliant media like we do it's basically no no different than the old soviet union where they had pravda mm -hmm. uh being the mouthpiece for the, for the soviet state now you have all the, uh, the major media outlets being uh, uh, mouthpieces for the biden administration and it's quite shameful and uh the fact that they're not embarrassed just shows you where how how uh, low our politics so, and our culture has become. So, um, you mentioned about a hundred billion dollars was given to Ukraine. Talk about the uh, where is that hundred billion dollars going? Is it going to the mil military industrial complex? Is it going to Ukraine? How is the uh, uh, the America spending that, that money or Ukraine spending the money? That's a good question. I'm sure the military contractors are having a field day because. Uh, the American government is sending uh, equipment over, so that mm -hmm. has to be paid for that for that uh, hundred billion dollars or part of it. And God knows who else is getting money in Ukraine for for uh, uh, lining the pockets of the politicians. And uh, as Ron Paul famously said about foreign aid, it's uh, poor people in America are being taxed to uh, to line the pockets of rich people overseas. And that's what we're probably seeing in the Ukraine. And a hundred billion dollars, Daryl is a boatload of money. I mean, that is an incredible yeah. amount of money in one year that's gone to the Ukraine. And so uh, no, no, no one in Congress, as, as far as I know, has called for an audit of where this money has gone. And the American people have a right to know. And, and adding insult to injury, Daryl, since, mm -hmm. we're, since we're running well over a trillion dollar deficit, that means that hundred billion dollars has been borrowed. So generation after generation of Americans are gonna have to pay back the, having to pay the interest on the hundred billion dollars that's been used to, to uh, uh, be sent to. Uh, mm -hmm. so well, so, you know, you're talking, you talked about a hundred billion dollars. Now we're looking at, you know, that's all the part of the military, the tanks. Um, now they're talking about, uh, you know, one of the strangest things is Germany who hated Russia. Uh, now Germany is providing tanks uh, to Ukraine. And now they're talking about, NATO is talking about uh, jets, uh, even troops on the ground. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, a month ago, you know, they were saying, they were saying no, 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 uh, no, no jets. Uh, and now they're, and, or, or troops on the ground from other parts of the, the world, from Europe, um, Germany, uh, you know. So what do you think about that? You know, with the F-16 jets, uh, they're talking about bringing over to uh, um, Ukraine and, um, and and also troops on the ground that will well, or that will challenge uh, the Russians that are in Ukraine. This is why we're seeing this step by step escalation uh, of the United States and NATO for the mm -hmm. past year since uh, Russia uh, uh, invaded uh, Ukraine. And so uh, the question is, where where is the end game here? What, what mm -hmm. is the end game? Because there have been reports that a year ago. Uh, Zelensky and Putin wanted to negotiate a peace, but the United States blocked it. So if that's the case, if that is true, then the United States is responsible for the, the carnage that's taken place in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And so by having this escalation 
uh, uh, the, uh, Putin and his advisors are probably saying, uh, this is not going to stop until we defeat the Ukraine. The Ukraine. And, um, and uh, what if uh, there are troops in Ukraine right now? Because uh, Judge Napolitano in a recent column, he, he said, he stated that there are American advisors in civilian clothes in Ukraine. Yes, uh, yes, there are. And so if that's the case, then clearly we are at war, uh, having blown up the pipeline with the UK, as mm -hmm. I pointed out in my column today on Substack. Uh, and so, great column on Substack. Uh, so thank you, Daryl. It's uh, murraysabrin.substack.com, and I'll be writing another column on Friday. Uh, and and, th and this is the escalation we saw in Vietnam during the uh, Eisenhower and Kennedy administrations. And then what happened in July 1965, uh, Johnson commits over 100,000 troops to, uh, to Vietnam. Now, remember, this is July of 65. And this is why I, 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 I wrote this piece uh, in Substack today. World War I started in July of 1914, and World War II started in September 1939. Mm -hmm. So it seems that the summer months, July, August, September, are very dangerous periods in the calendar for the beginning of major conflict. In fact, the Korean War started in June of 1950. So if you go back to the major interventions um, that the United States had, uh, they were basically in, in the summertime, and the, and the two world wars were in the summertime. Uh, the only war that didn't start in the summertime, uh, two of them, uh, uh, the first Gulf War started in January of 1991, and, this, and uh, Desert Storm started in uh, March of 2003. But other mm -hmm. than that, uh, the, the, for some reason, I don't, know, I don't know if there's any explanation for that, but um, it could be that the weather in Europe is is very conducive to starting a war in the summertime. And, um, and uh, interesting that, that the Russians in, uh, invaded Ukraine in February, which is a very strange time because um, uh, the weather is not that great for the troops to, to be fighting a war. So anyway, the, the, the point that, that, that we need to focus on, Daryl, is that um, this, is, this is war creep. Uh, it's steadily escalating. Rather than have an all-out de declaration of war where the United States and NATO uh, uh, roll the tanks into the Ukraine and cross the border into Russia, this is d being done by the drip, drip, drip process. So it could, it could be this summer where we see a, mess, a major escalation if, if, if Putin thinks that uh, he is being surrounded. Now, Poland is, is flexing its muscles also. Yeah. And and remember, Poland is a NATO member, and and the NATO uh, charter says any attack on a country in NATO is an attack on all the countries, and so that's why I think Putin has been very careful not to have any engagement with NATO because that in, in, with Poland because that would trigger a major uh, NATO response. Mm -hmm. Probably, who knows? Uh, but. Uh, Hopefully, there's some back channels happening right now, as there was during the Cuban Missile Crisis, where Kennedy and Khrushchev had secret negotiations with their emissaries to, to uh, cool down the tensions, and it worked. Uh, the Soviet Union took the missiles out of uh, Cuba. We took the missiles out of Turkey. Remember, we had missiles right at the footsteps of the Soviet Union in Turkey. And uh, the other thing that happened, which most people don't know about, is that uh, Kennedy promised uh, to stop the uh, CIA from training uh, Cuban exiles in Louisiana to do another Bay of Pigs invasion, to do another mm -hmm. invasion of Cuba. So the CIA was unhappy with Kennedy. Uh, and, um, and we know what happened um, a year after the, uh, the Cuban Missile Crisis. Kennedy was assassinated. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are a lot, there's a lot of intrigue here, Daryl. Also, you know, I would like to also talk about China. Yeah. And, uh, you know, your Secretary of State went to, uh, you know, he met with uh, some Chinese officials, and basically they, they uh, you know, he basically sent the threat to China and said that uh, don't send Russia any uh, weapons that would uh, cause any type of destruction. And so that's one of the the serious things that uh, you know, people say, well, if what happens if 
China gets more involved with this, you know, with this, this war. I mean, if you look at America, America is definitely involved sending weapons and Germany uh, sending weapons to uh, Ukraine, money to Ukraine. Why? Uh, so what's the problem if China sends uh, weapons, any types of resources to, uh, to Russia? Why is that a well, problem? Well, of course, uh, the Americans and NATO don't want the, the American government, the Biden administration, it's not the American people, it's the Biden administration, mm -hmm. uh, do not want to see Russia have an all-out win in, in, in Ukraine, because that would be a... Uh, uh, that would be uh, losing face, uh, of course, and, and, and being a, a major defeat for, for, for the United States and NATO. So, uh, but by threatening China, uh, makes, makes no sense because uh, China and the United States have major trade relations. And if China gets involved in, by sending more military aid, and who knows how much aid they're sending right now, uh, mm -hmm. will the United States call for sanctions against China, our major trading partner? Uh, because that would be devastating to the American economy and the Chinese economy. That would pl probably plunge the world into a depression if you cut off trade between uh, two major economic powers. So I don't know if the Biden administration has thought this out very clearly uh, in terms of what are the ramifications for uh, saber rattling, uh, not only in Ukraine, but against China, because um, uh, China can start something in Taiwan if they wanted to uh, overnight. Overnight, yeah. And then, then what is the U.S. response there? So, mm -hmm. uh, so there are also scenarios that could unfold here that would be horrible for everybody involved except the military-industrial complex and uh, the, the uh, Biden administration that would probably scare the hell out of the American people and say, we need to have economic control. We can't, uh, we're, we're, we're in a war footing and we have to have controls like we did in World War II to have victory. Well, World War II was a lot different than today because we had two enemies overseas, a, a two-front war. Do we really want to fight a two-front war in the Ukraine and in uh, uh, the South uh, and in, in the uh, Taiwan Straits? I mean, this Didn't is worry about North Korea. Yeah, and what's yeah. North Korea going to do if the United States and, and uh, China square off on Taiwan? Yeah. Will ta Taiwan? Will North Korea be silent? Uh, will they lob a few missiles into South Korea? Will they lob mm -hmm. a few missiles into Japan? I mean, yeah. uh, I don't know what these people are thinking because uh, if they think that uh, 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 wars are winnable, I mean, the United States hasn't won a war since World War II. We've been involved in Korea. We had a standoff there. The communists took over Vietnam. So we didn't w w uh, stop that. Um, uh, and, and to say that we uh, won in the Middle East, um, is 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 not not quite uh, accurate since the Taliban have taken over uh, Afghanistan after 20 years, and God knows how much money we spent in in, in there. Plus, we left what 80 billion dollars worth of equipment in yeah. Afghanistan. So, I mean, go ahead. Yeah. So, so you know, one of the things I want to talk about is you know we all you know definitely remember our war Afghanistan, our war in Iraq, and the whole military industrial complex, with the, and also the media. Uh, you know, plays such a big part in what people are thinking. And I'm sure the media played a, a major part in World War I, II, uh, the Vietnam War, and the media, and, and now the media plays a, a definitely, as you talked about earlier, a major part in what people think. And, uh, you know, are American people, um, how do you, are they getting more educated or are they becoming, as I say, more ignorant of what's happening to our society as, you uh, know, what's happening in Ukraine, because I talked to a lot of people in Ukraine, you know, they know nothing about uh, the Ukraine government, they know nothing, uh, uh, mainly the, the fascism, the Nazism, things that are going over in, in Ukraine, uh, they know nothing about that. They all know that the whole the propaganda machine from the, me the media, an American media democratic propaganda machine is pushing out a, a, a certain way of thinking. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you look Look at I, I watch news from around the world, and, and their their media is totally different from America. But you have Americans believing totally so differently what parts of the world are believing, and that bothers me because remember we, you know when George Bush weapons of mass destruction, you know uh, you know let's go fight Saddam Hussein. He helped start the war. He's got weapons of mass destruction. He's going to destroy America. 
and then the media and their propaganda and the fear machine. Uh, you know, what do you think about that? Is that possible that could happen right now or the next few months? The uh, the push out the agenda, the propaganda, yeah. getting people nervous, getting people upset, afraid, and or a uh, some type of disaster or uh, something that may happen to get the people so angry that they would able to they would love to send their kids off the war. Well. Th th this is why it's so dangerous what they're doing now is that they're, mm -hmm. they're, they're ginning up the anti-Russian sentiment in this country, the anti-Chinese sentiment. In fact, there was one so-called Chinese expert uh, on, on cable the other day, and he said this balloon that came over is uh, the first step in the Chinese invasion of the United States. Where the evidence is for that is beyond me. I mean, why would you want to invade uh, when you're six, 8,000 miles away from the United States, the mainland, Mm -hmm. And uh, and what would be the benefit for the Chinese to try to invade the United States? I mean, people think that it's it's a piece of cake to have an invasion. Logistically, it's a nightmare um, for any country to invade another country, especially a, a country that's six, eight thousand miles away from uh, from uh, Beijing. And mm -hmm. so the propaganda machine is rubbing up the American people because uh, that's what the Biden administration wants. Once they want the American people to be fearful of Russia and China, when they should be, we should be at peace with them. The, the Berlin Wall came down, the Soviet Union imploded. China has been reforming their economy. If true, the, the Communist Party still rules the place with an iron fist, but that's the Chinese people's problem, not our problem, mm -hmm. because uh, mm -hmm. U.S. companies are still there producing goods and sending them back to us. And so uh, the propaganda machine is is mind-boggling. Seema Hirsch's column. In, on Substack uh, recently exposed the fact that the United States and the UK uh, joint, jointly blew up the Nord Stream pipeline. And from what I understand, since I don't watch the major, uh, mainstream media anymore, they didn't cover his column. Now, he's been an investigative reporter for more than 55 years. I mean, his credentials, he works for the New York Times. He, he's, he's a Pulitzer Prize winning uh, writer. And yet his uh, story was blocked out by the mainstream media. So if you're not getting your uh, news from online sources uh, on, on the internet, uh, mm -hmm. then you, you don't know what's going on because you're getting the daily dose of propaganda from the three mm -hmm. major networks, plus CNN, MSNBC, the New York Times, Washington Post, and the other organs of, of uh, the mainstream media, which are tied into the Pentagon and the White House. Mm -hmm. All they're doing is reading press releases because uh, if you if you see Never a montage, the same. they do. I mean, it's it's um it's like Groundhog Day in the media. It's everything yeah. is the same over and over Everybody, again. Every, they, yeah, they everything is the same. They, they have different pretty faces reading the same uh, press releases. Their mm -hmm. their words are exactly the same uh, regarding the pipeline. Uh, I saw a montage the other day. In fact, it was on LouRockwell.com. Uh, where people were mouthing the same exact words on different cable networks and the mainstream and the uh, and the TV uh, shows, I mean it, it's incredible that these people are shameless. That they there's no thinking about these issues. All they're doing is reading what the Biden administration wants the American people to hear. And so, 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 so for 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 me, it's like where is the um, the strong Republicans? Yeah, who are who are against this and against the Biden regime, and uh, are not speaking out like they should. I know they questioned McCarthy and questioned some things, the money that was given uh, to uh, Ukraine, but no one, I don't hear no one screaming, hollering uh, from the Republican side about this. Yeah, th there's there's no really anti-war opposition in in the Congress, and uh, this is very dangerous because we're going to be. Um, going down the slippery slope of more money and more aid to Ukraine, which means that um, the, the, this is the creep that we saw during Vietnam, yeah. and we're seeing it again here. And uh, it could only end in one thing. Well, it could only end in two things. We withdraw our support for Zelensky, and he has to negotiate a peace with uh, Putin, or we we escalate this, the, uh, the aid, and Putin escalates, and we escalate, and Putin escalates, and before you know it, uh, we're eyeball to eyeball with uh, someone, mm -hmm. someone having the fingers on the nuclear weapon, uh, the nuclear buttons on both sides. And uh, God knows what that means for Europe. So you would think 
since the Europeans are closer to Moscow and uh, the Russian border, they would be screaming for a peaceful settlement of uh, the Ukraine situation. But uh, we don't hear them uh, speaking out because the United States is, uh, uh, has troops in Germany, still troops in Germany, 70, uh, what, 77 years after the end of World War II. I mean, um, there are people who think, who, who, who make the assertion, Daryl, that the Russia wants to uh, invade the West. I mean, where is well, that? They don't. they don't want to. I, I've never, I've never seen anything, heard anything, or just uh, when I, I did my research about um, a Russia and Putin, they would never in, want to go into Germany or Poland. That's that. That wasn't, uh, you know, that was never on his agenda. Yeah, I mean, look how, how many troops he's lost already yeah. in Ukraine, uh, and of course. Uh, the United uh, and remember uh, the, the Soviet Union was was in Afghanistan for ten years, and that helped end the Soviet Union because um, mm -hmm. uh, we supplied arms to the Mujahideen and uh, and uh, the Soviets uh, got a licking. The, the troops were coming home in body bags, and the mm -hmm. mothers were going crazy, and they were printing money uh, just like the Federal Reserve does here, and the the, the economy was in shambles. And uh, that's when um, the Berlin Wall came down mm -hmm. in 1989, 10 years after the uh, Russians invaded uh, um, uh, Afghanistan. So uh, I, I have no confidence, uh, no faith in uh, the people in Washington to do the right thing when it comes to foreign policy, because I've seen it in my whole lifetime um, since the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. they, they've stumbled and stumbled and stumbled and created tremendous destruction around the world and um, and uh, it, it's just an example of why the founding fathers were so right when they were opposed to a standing army. They were opposed to uh, to uh, giving the federal government so much power after they fought the British to, to become free and independent. And um, what what Washington what happened in Washington for the past hundred plus years is greater and greater consolidation of power on the economy and on on foreign affairs. And so now we have what uh, libertarians call the welfare warfare state. Everyone mm -hmm. is satisfied. You have, you have uh, massive welfare spending, massive foreign uh, military spending, and uh, the powers in Washington are happy as can be because they're shelling out money to the tune of $6 trillion a year. And uh, no one in, in, in the Congress is saying enough is enough. Let's actually cut the budget instead of talking about, uh, and instead what they talk about, Daryl, is, uh, well, we're only going to increase the budget 5% this year instead of 8%. Well, mm -hmm. all that means is that you're uh, going slower toward the fiscal cliff than, uh, than the Democrats want because they want to push, push the uh, fiscal uh, accelerator in, in, uh, in, in fifth gear, and, uh, and the Republicans may want to keep it in fourth gear. And that's the big, uh, the big debate they're having in Washington these days. So, so tell us, is this a proxy war or is it a direct? You know, I look at it as more of a, a direct war, but, you know, what do you think? Well, it started out as a proxy war, but I think it's escalated to the point where uh, it, it, it's basically the United States and NATO versus uh, Russia. So uh, more of a and, direct war? Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a direct war, but uh, right now there are no officially acknowledged U.S. troops and advisors in the Ukraine, but they've got to be there. Mm -hmm. They've got to be overseeing the aid that's there, the military equipment that's there. And uh, we know Biden has uh, connections through Hunter, his son, with the Ukrainian government. And uh, Biden was there also as vice president. And uh, so he has connections with, sure. the, uh, with the political elite in, in the Ukraine. So uh, th th this, is the, this is the most horrible situation we've seen in my lifetime uh, in terms mm -hmm. of foreign policy. So, you know, there are people that ask me, what makes Ukraine so special that we got to send a hundred billion dollars over there? We got to send uh, some, we definitely have sent it, we're sending tanks, we're going to send F F, uh, F-16s. What makes Ukraine so special? Or is it just special to NATO? Well, here's the interesting thing, Daryl. Mm -hmm. If you go back to the 19th century, the mm -hmm. 1890s, there was a British geographer, Harold Mackinder, who had a hypothesis that for the Western powers to be safe from Russia and China, 
they had to make sure that those two countries were contained within what he called the heartland. And if you draw a line from the Korean Peninsula to Southeast Asia, where we fought in Vietnam, to the Middle East, to Ukraine, it f- forms a perfect arc from Korea mm. to Southeast Asia, to Middle East, to Ukraine. Mm-hmm. And that's been the basis of U.S. foreign policy uh, since the end of uh, World War I, that, it, it's the, uh, that the, uh, the United States and uh, its allies, especially after World War II, are determined to make sure that Russia and China don't expand. But China has been expanding economically in Africa, in South America. Uh, they realize that going in militarily would not work. So they're doing it with all the tremendous uh, resources they have. And, uh, and now they're getting pushback from uh, the natives in different parts of the world because apparently from reports that their construction projects have been pretty shoddy. They haven't, they haven't been very high quality. And so mm-hmm. countries are becoming more disillusioned with the Chinese invest, so-called investment in their country. So again, uh, governments that overreach get their comeuppance eventually. Sometimes it takes longer than we would like, but uh, no country can continue to go down an authoritarian path for any length of time. We saw the evil empire, as Ronald Reagan called it, the Soviet Union, collapse before our eyes. Mm-hmm. Who ever thought that would have happened, uh, Daryl? In the mid '80s, when I started teaching at Rampo College in 1985, mm-hmm. if I had if I had made a uh, if I gave a talk saying the Berlin Wall was going to come down, uh, mm-hmm. East Europe would be liberated, and the Soviet Union would collapse within 10 years, it all happened by 1991. Mm-hmm. So in six years from the time I started teaching, the world changed dramatically, and we were supposed to have this great peace dividend where we wouldn't have mm-hmm. to have all these missiles, we wouldn't have a have, have a large military industrial complex. But what happened after um, uh, the Berlin Wall came down and the Soviet Union uh, collapsed? We went into the Middle East. We went into uh, uh, Desert Storm. Mm -hmm. We we kicked uh, uh, Iraq out of Kuwait. When Mm -hmm. when the United States said, uh, uh, ambassador to to Iraq said, this is not our battle. Uh, Your your dispute with Kuwait is is your uh, uh, issue that you have to deal with. And so the United States has been lying through their teeth. The, the diplomat after diplomat have been lying through their teeth uh, for decades. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. and the American people have paid a heavy price. And so, mm-hmm. have, uh, so have foreign nationals. Now, you're talking about, you talked earlier with me over the phone about Governor DeSantis. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so, so talk about, what is, was it his speech or uh, article? Uh, he, 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 he gave, gave an interview to Fox an News. Interview. And, Fox News interview. And, and uh, Jordan Schachtel on uh, Substack wrote mm-hmm. about it, and he pointed mm-hmm. out that um, DeSantis made some very critical remarks about the Biden administration's foreign policy, and that uh, he, he said, as a former um, um, uh, military officer in Iraq in 2007, he said, what are the strategic objectives in Iraq? Uh, I'm sorry, in, in, in the Ukraine, in Ukraine. And uh, Biden hasn't laid out anything except to uh, say that the democracy is threatened in, um, in uh, Ukraine. Well, that's not a strategic policy to, to say that democracy is threatened when there is no democracy in Ukraine. So I don't know what Biden's talking about. But uh, if DeSantis becomes a, a candidate for president, and he makes these very critical remarks about U.S. foreign policy mm-hmm. that we need to change course and that we uh, uh, should not be involved in, um, in basically propping up nations that have no strategic interest to us. In fact, I would make the case uh, the only nations that have strategic interest to us is basically Canada and Mexico because they border us. But um, as far as countries in South America and Africa, this is what people have to realize, American people have to realize, we can't solve the world's problems. We cannot do that. It's, it's, it's first of all, it's militarily um, uh, unworkable. It's financially uh, draining and uh, it just doesn't work. It's not practical. Uh, countries mm-hmm. have to find their own way in the world. But the governor said this, if he comes out strongly that um, uh, our foreign policy is, is not conducive to American people's interests, and if he says the American people's interest, that, that he, he should be applauded for that because it's not the American government's interest. I mean, the American government uh, has one interest, and that is to exercise its power around the world. Mm-hmm. And 
uh, and we have to keep our border safe, which of course is not happening at the southern border. Now we know um, uh, people are coming in from the northern border as well, New Hampshire, Vermont. So uh, again, we have a mess domestically. The Biden administration is not dealing with it, but Governor DeSantis, in the way he dealt with um, the COVID situation in Florida, and uh, we've been in Florida now uh, nearly two years, and things been all right. Are, yeah, things are a lot better <laughs> yeah, than uh, I can tell you the Northeast no. and in California. So yeah. um, it's great to be down here. The weather is wonderful. Mm -hmm. The people are very friendly, and um, it's getting crowded because people are coming to Florida by by the thousands each day. I mean, yeah. uh, Florida oh, yeah, has, been, has been the most attractive state in the union to migrate uh, to. Yeah. I, you know, I was I was hoping that um, CPAC would be in Florida this year, but it's, it's back in Washington. So I'll be at CPAC and uh, for the uh, for March first to the fourth, promoting uh, the book, uh, Welcome to America. So it's uh, I'm going to be meeting. Hopefully, DeSantis show up and 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 all the uh, Republican politicians talking to him and having a great conversation uh, because it's needed to be. Uh, things that need to be talked about, what's going on in America and the media and, and both sides, uh, from the liberal to conservative, uh, to also independent media needs to start talking about truth, you know, and it, and it bothers me that when you look at it, you know, I like to look at CNN, Fox News, MSNBC. I think MSNBC is, is, is the worst. Uh, they covered the rally and they said all types of nuts, crazy people were at the rally on the 19th, which it was so... Uh, it's so terrible. I think Rachel Maddox said this. You know, she did the uh, she did a little a hit piece on the rally, and you know what Rachel Maddox is all about. But it, it's kind of sad that people in America aren't getting real media, uh, aren't listening to uh, just listening to the mainstream media, and the mainstream media is not telling them the truth. And it worries me that um, that you know both you know. The, we got Republicans who aren't speaking the truth about what's happening in, in Ukraine and the money that's given. And, and uh, yeah, it's, it's sad. It's sad. And, you know, that's some of the things I definitely want to talk about when I get to CPAC and, you know, talking to people about, you know, what do you think? You know, I, you know, just the idea of, of what, what happens, you know, we talk about, uh, we talk about uh, NATO and uh, America and promised Russia that NATO would not come close to their border. And, I mean, can you imagine if China decides to pit missiles in, in Mexico? You know, <laughs> what would happen if China pit missiles in Canada? What would happen if it would be another Cuban missile crisis or, or definitely America would start off World War III again? World War III, really World War III, and start, you know, dropping bombs. But, uh, you know, it, it's just... To me, uh, Professor Saban, it's just, it, it ha you know, how could this happen over and over again and that the American people seems to fall for the, for the foolishness, the fake news? You know, Trump talked about fake news, yeah. media. You know, how, why is, um, is uh, are American people getting more ignorant, dumber than ever before? Well, I think they're disengaged, Daryl. I think that enough of the population... Uh has enough things to worry about in their own private lives that they're not, uh, they're not focused on uh, these big picture issues. And um, again, having observed this for so many decades, I mean, what the, the, the most anti-war sentiment we had was during the Vietnam War because young people were being drafted. I mean, mm -hmm. that was the thing during the Vietnam is young people were being drafted and, yeah. and, uh, and people saw their sons going off to uh, the jungles uh, 8,000 miles away and coming back maimed or dead. Remember, 58,000 Americans died during Vietnam, and uh, God knows how many hundreds of thousands, if not a million or more, were uh, injured, and some of them uh, disabled for life. Uh, collecting same thing better. in Afghanistan, you know, same thing in Afghanistan and Iraq. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, we didn't have that many casualties, but we certainly had enough casualties on the other side. Yeah. Innocent civilians in Afghanistan and, uh, and Iraq. Uh, a, half a, a half a million, I think, 500 Five to six hundred thousand people. Well, that was that was the, with the Clinton sanctions. Mm -hmm. If you remember, uh, yeah. there were estimates that five hundred thousand Iraqis died because there was there were there were sanctions by the United States on medicine going to Iraq, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. men, women, and children, civilians died. These are crimes against humanity, mm -hmm. and uh, no one was pro was prosecuted for that. And it just shows you the double standard that the American uh, political establishment has in the media.
have about these atrocities that happened. You don't have to uh, have uh, gas chambers to have an atrocity. Mm -hmm. Ob uh, you can have Obama and Obama and his drones. You know, it's like uh, you can't win. Well, th this is why the American people have to wake up from their stupor because we, we're, j we're coming out of COVID. People were focused on COVID. People were focused on trying to keep their head above water with their businesses, with their jobs, uh, mm -hmm. with their kids at home from uh, homeschooling. And, um, and, and the mainstream media are just not reporting it. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, this is the shocking thing about the media. I haven't watched the mainstream media for a year now. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't, I just, I, I just want to keep my blood pressure down, Daryl, so I don't watch it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because uh, it's just infuriating having lived uh, to see all these things happening in my lifetime about P Johnson lying to us and, uh, and uh, the Bushes lying to us and Clinton lying to us and, mm -hmm. and everyone else uh, lying about what's going on overseas. Uh, and of course, Biden is taking us to the brink of a nuclear war. Mm -hmm. I mean, even though he ran against Bernie Sanders in the primary, it seems Joe Biden has given us Bernie Sanders domestic policy and John McCain's foreign policy. No, yeah. no one has said this. Joe Biden is the incarnation of Bernie Sanders and John McCain, the mm -hmm. worst of, 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 of uh, two individuals, socialism at home and militarism overseas. You're That's right. what Biden has given us. And mm -hmm. if the American people don't wake up, we're going to find that we're going to have major economic controls in this country. We're going to have a digital currency where the, fe the Federal Reserve will monitor all our expenditures. They'll know exactly what we're buying in the, in the supermarket, wh what mm -hmm. our driving habits are, what our, uh, what our uh, reading habits are, what our online uh, activities are. They're going to know everything about it. It's going to be the Soviet Union on steroids. That's yeah. what we're going to see in America if the American people don't push back and push back hard. That's mm -hmm. why the strategy that we should employ, Daryl, mm -hmm. is that uh, we, there's got to be a, a really wealthy pro-peace billionaire out there who will say, enough is enough. I'm going to invest in primaries to get rid of the pro-war Democrats and Republicans out there. Mm -hmm. It may not be all of them, but we can start. And then, of course, uh, I suggested in my column that uh, the American people form a super PAC, a pro-peace super PAC headed by Ron Paul and Tulsi Gabbard, the probably two most high-profile pro-peace um, individuals in America, former members of Congress and presidential candidates, by the way. And they could co-chair uh, a super PAC raise money from the American people, five, 10, 50, 100, 200, 1,000, whatever people can give, and you have a pool of money and do the same thing in, in getting rid of the most uh, vocal uh, pro-war people in Congress. And, and mm -hmm. you primary them in, to, in 2024, and then we start the ball rolling. And it's going to take a concerted effort if, as long as uh, there's going to be election in 2024. What if we, there is a war? And Biden's uh, administration, if he's the candidate, says we can't have an election in wartime, and they decide to cancel the election or postpone the election. Mm. There goes American democracy. What would people say who are so uh, passionate about democracy if the election is canceled? Is that yeah. a possibility? Yes. Is it likely? Anything Probably not. Possible. And listen, we've seen a president assassinated in my lifetime. We've seen his brother and a civil rights leader assassinated in 1968. We've seen undeclared wars, Daryl. Yeah. We've yeah. seen wage and price controls. We've seen mm -hmm. everything. We've seen everything um, in the last 60, 65 years. So mm -hmm. I don't put anything past uh, the, uh, any administration doing horrific things to the American people and, and, um, and continuing this war machine. And, you know, listen, I, I definitely believe what you're saying, and I, uh, I don't put anything past especially with uh, with Biden in office and, and his administration. So it's, you know, hopefully that people wake up, people will listen to this show, share this show, uh, get the message out, uh, wake up, um, leave mainstream. I, you know, I, I watch, you know, I can, I can, it's, it's kind of difficult for me to uh, 
leave mainstream media alone because I like to know what all sides are thinking. Absolutely. And, and then I, I watch independent and, and, and media around the world. So, you know, people have to wake up, educate themselves, read more, uh, uh, listen, read uh, Professor Mary Sabrin's, uh, what is your uh, your site again, Substack? Professor MurraySabrin.substack.com. And of course, get my autobiography where I talk about yes. the Vietnam War. Yes. So that and, and 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 people need to be you know wake up and be aware you know I was uh, was watching a, a Martin Luther King documentary okay wow awesome yes that's it <laughs> you know Professor Saber and I was watching a, a Martin Luther King uh, documentary and uh, they talk about his death and you know why because of the the, the, the Vietnam War yeah and he was bringing five hundred thousand people. Uh, to Washington, you know, uh, uh, you know, he was planning a uh, poor people's campaign, which he did have. And as soon as I finished watching that, you know, I was thinking, I, I talked, I'm a good friend of uh, Reverend Dr. Bernard Lafayette, and he was one of the main organizers of that rally. And I, and I said, uh, I called him, I said, Dr. Bernard Lafayette, I said, you know, you guys are real radicals, revolutionaries. He said, yeah, we were. And he said, Martin Luther King, this is why, you know, Martin Luther King had to, to be assassinated because he was a revolutionary speaking out about the Vietnam War and how the left, uh, you know, basically uh, challenged uh, Martin Luther King, basically disavow tried to disavow Martin Luther King, the left and Democratic Party. And uh, it's it, it was sad, but when you bring people together like this, when you bring black, white, Spanish, young and old together, to speak out about Vietnam, the war, that they have to do something to take you out. And, 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 and that's true. You know, what happens when something happens now and, you know, you have a big rally and other people are speaking out, challenging the whole military industrial complex, challenging government, what they will do to all the dissenters, the revolutionaries, the patriots that speak out, you know, where they, where they put us in jail and in camps, those things that people, uh, really need to think about because if this is an unjust war, no, no, a war that we should not be in, uh, you know, we have to speak out. We have to do something. Uh, speak for truth. Well, this is why um, I've dedicated myself in my post-teaching mm -hmm. career to uh, get the message out to as many people as possible, not only about the economy and the Federal Reserve, and uh, and the cons uh, destructive policies that they've uh, been doing, plus uh, mm -hmm. all the government spending. But the war issue is, is the key because the, or the war is tied in, as Ron Paul pointed out at the rally, is tied into the Federal Reserve because uh, we have huge bud budget deficits. The Federal Reserve buys up the debt. They print up money to do so. And then we're off to the races with inflation. So we, we're in an inflationary environment. And inflation has cooled a little bit from 9% to a little over 6% in the last uh, eight months, but still 6% inflation is, no, uh, is, is not good for the American people because mm -hmm. their wages are not keeping up. Plus they're getting taxed on their higher incomes. So they're losing purchasing power every single day. Uh, food is going up, uh, which is the mainstay of uh, the household. Uh, rents are going up. Maybe it's not as much as they were a year ago. Everybody's <laughs> eating chicken. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, uh, the, 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 in the air farm, yeah, you know, yeah, uh, egg prices fortunately have come down from where they were a year ago. Mm -hmm. But we we know that there have been fires and uh, um, and uh, explosions at food plants around the country. So we don't. What is going on there? Can can they mm -hmm. be all that incompetent in, uh, in in safety around the country? So something is going on here, Daryl. That makes me very concerned that uh, the Biden administration will come up one day with an executive order um, uh, sort of nationalizing the food processing in this country. And uh, we've seen this uh, in the World War I, World War II, where the government takes control of various industries through rules and regulations. So uh, we're headed down a very dangerous path and uh, we have to speak out. If we want to have a, a free society, a prosperous society, uh, and we want to have uh, peaceful relations around the world, we have to have those policies which will give us peace. We just can't talk about it. We have to be activists for liberty. That's what it comes down to, activists for liberty. And that's what um, uh, I'm trying to do now in, in uh, this phase of my life because um, you know, life is too short and uh, uh, future generations deserve uh, to, have, to live in a free society. 
as, as much as possible. And if we can get there, um, that would be a, a, a great blessing for future generations. Well, and with that, I'd like to say thank you for coming on. Um, uh, you know, we'll definitely be having more conversations and definitely what's happening if the war, if, if this war even, es when it, if it does escalate, God willing, it, it will not. But, uh, but people sure. have to be aware of what's, we're aware of what's happening. Uh, listen to shows like this. Uh, get Professor Mary Saban's book. Uh, it's a powerful book, I guarantee you. Uh, educate yourself about what's happening. And Professor Mary Saber, once again, I just thank you for coming on. You stay safe. Keep writing those uh, editorials for Substack, and uh, you know you'll 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 definitely help. <laughs> you'll definitely get. You should be getting awards for your writing because there's awesome awesome writings that you're you're putting out and making people aware, educating people from around the country about what's happening. Uh, it's so important because people need to know the truth. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Daryl. And you Thank keep you. up your great work and, and getting the, the word out to uh, all the Facebook people out there and uh, through other uh, platforms as well. Mm, thank you. And we got we want people to share this. Well, thank you. And, and uh, I'll give you a call back. Thank you. Take care. Thank you so much. Take Bye. care. Hi, everyone. This is Daryl McKell Brooks, the host of the On Fire Show. I'd like to thank you all for watching. Uh, that was Professor Mary Sabrin, uh, and he writes for Stuff Substack. And uh, we will put up the link for you to check out his article. Listen, we, we have to be aware. We have to share this information. We have to uh, speak the truth. You know, Martin Luther King said, no lie can live forever. Truth crest the earth arise again. The arc of our universe is long, but it's been towards justice. Uh, we have to stand up for freedom, uh, freedom and rights, and uh, know the truth. Look at different media. Media is uh, from, if you want to look at mainstream media, be educated on what's happening with mainstream media, independent media, media around the uh, country and around the world. Um, understand what's happening in, in, in Ukraine, what's happening in Russia, what's happening in China, North Korea, you know, what's happening around the world. We have to educate ourselves. You know, that's, that's so important. If we don't educate ourselves, then we are ignorant of uh, what's happening around the world, okay? So thank you. God bless. As Martin Luther King said it, he said it best that we're all caught up in this inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. And whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. And that I can never be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be. And you can never be what you ought to be unless I am what I ought to be. And he quotes the poet John Donne that says, no man is an island. Every man is a piece of continent, a part of the main. Then he goes on to say that any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind. Therefore, never send the gnome whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. And this is what we should be as a country, as a, as a world, helping each other, being strong. But some of us don't see it that way. So we have to keep pushing, knowing that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is on our side. I'm a Christian, and I'm always talking about my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God is always with us. God will never leave us. All we have to do is call on us and learn to love, forgive, and have empathy for people uh, that are suffering, who have less than us. Okay? Thank you. God bless. Peace. See you next time. This is the On Fire Show with Daryl McKell Brooks. Hope you learned something today.